Hi, Commissioner Collard. I see you've joined the meeting. Would you like to do a mic check? She's on the phone with Commissioner Collard. We were both um, working on successfully getting into the meeting. Yes. <clears throat> Pure luck on my part. Commissioner Mullen, I see you've joined the meeting. Would you like to do a mic check? Sure. Hi. Sounds good. Thank you. Chair Lakin and uh, Courtney, uh, Commissioner Pecht will not be here tonight and Commissioner Willison will not be here tonight either. Okay, so we're waiting on Commissioner May and Manguio. So Emily, do we have to have um, five present to, for a quorum, or do we simply have to have? Yeah, because you know, we haven't filled those. Hey, sorry. Yeah. Webex is the stupidest app ever. I just turned <laughs> the settings. Tell us what you really think, Ken. Every time I connect, it like resets all of my settings and like defaults to the wrong uh, stuff. So, give me a sec. I'm here. That's okay. I've been here actually. <laughs> I've just been trying to get logged in. Yeah. Just everybody let me know when you're ready to go and I'll start the meeting. And Chair Lakin, Commissioner Mongio is here as well. Oh, I saw her. Hi, Inez. There we go. Is she, do you need to do a mic check for Inez? Yeah, am I muted? Can you hear me? We can hear you. You I sound great. Hear you. I think I have everyone correct, staff. Everyone is going to come. Yeah? Yes, Chair Lakin. Everyone okay, goody. Um, <laughs> I'm just grabbing my bottle of water. Uh, do you need me to, to roll call or? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, yeah, um, just give me at some point. Um, I guess we do need roll call. We'll let him get his water. I think he needs it. So <laughs> I think he worked up a sweat getting in here. I'm back. Okay, he's back. Okay. Uh, so uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the regular meeting of the Arts and Culture Commission. Uh, this is Tuesday, July 13th. And we don't have a huge agenda, but um, we've got some things that at the beginning are going to take us a little bit of time here. We've got um, the approval of minutes, um, and that's I hoping everybody read it, um, all the minutes. But anyway, um, let's do roll call first, please. Uh, Commissioner Collard? Present. Uh, Chair Lakin? Here. Commissioner May? Here. Commissioner Munguio? Commissioner Munguio? Oh. And Commissioner Mullen? Here. Thank you. We're good. Okay. Um, have any special presentations and announcements? Chair Lakin, before we move forward, if all of the commissioners can mute their microphone, then it will decrease the amount of um, feedback we get when when commissioners and or staff members are speaking. All right, I'll pass it back to you, Marie. 
Okay, uh, Emily, do we have special presentations and announcements? We do not this evening. Okay. And do we have anybody watching the WebEx tonight who would like to speak to us on an item not on the agenda? This is the time for speaking. Do we have anybody mm -hmm. set to do that? No. Okay, so uh, let's move to our consent items, approval of minutes. Um, and basically for each one of these, we've got February, March, April, May, and June, I believe we need a separate motion or can we just make one motion to approve them all, Emily? You can you can do a single motion to approve them all. Okay. If there's anything that you choose to revise or would like edited, it can be included in a single motion or if you wanna split them separately, you can, but most commissions will just do one fell swoop with all. Okay, good. That, that'll save us some time. Okay, commissioners, uh, if you've read them, and I hope you have, uh, do you see anything that needs to be changed or added to any of these sets of agendas? Uh, Chair uh, Lakin, I, I missed two of the meetings, so I don't think I should be voting on the, those minutes. That'd be April and June. You are allowed to vote um, if you were not present at the meeting, if you reviewed the video and the minutes. I did not review the video, so I don't. I, okay, that's fine. Do we have a quorum able to uh, approve the minutes then? Yes, so once we have a quorum to start the meeting, if Commissioner Collar decides to recuse himself from the vote connected to the April and the June meeting minutes, uh -huh. then the, the quora or the, the approval of whether the motion passes or not is based on a majority vote. So then it reduces the majority to four. We would have to have three voting to approve the minutes with one either choosing not to, to approve, um, but it could still pass with a three, one vote or a four, zero vote. So I move to approve the minutes as are. And I, I will second that. Okay, and so then I, I need a vote from everyone. Okay. Except for John. <laughs> Commissioner Collard. Uh, Commissioner Collard. Okay. Um, Commissioner Manguia. Approve. Aye. Commissioner Mullen. Aye. Uh, Commissioner May. Aye. And com Chair Lincoln. Yes. Your your audio is very odd. <laughs> it sounds like you're like down a well. Uh, so I don't know what that is. It's, it's kind of fun to listen to though. <laughs> So um, let's move on to our formal items. Uh, and we've now gone to item number two, uh, review and recommendation, public art utility box at Telephone Road and Manelli Avenue. Staff? Okay, Catherine here, Commissioner Lakin, um, and rest of commission. This box is, um, an action item, it's recommended that the Arts and Cultural Commission review and recommend the public art design rendering for the utility box proposed at Telephone and Romelli Avenues. And if you will recall this, um, we had in, I think it was April, another box in this corner and that artist, Carolina Canosa, is, um, was asked again by a community member to paint the other box. So this is a second box at this location at Telephone Road and Romelli Avenue. The Community Partnerships Division received a public art utility box application from the community member, Donald King, and Mr. King commissioned artist Carolina Canosa to design and paint the proposed utility box adjacent to the larger box she painted. Mr. King was inspired by Carolina's original design, having experienced a family tragedy in that location where the utility boxes were located Mr. King wanted to bring beauty to the area along with closure for his family. The proposed design includes children playing soccer, a child flying a kite, an adult walking the dog in a park setting. 
The artist has incorporated the color palette from the previous uh, box, a mix of sunset pinks, purples, and peaches against the green trees, grass of the park with the figures in a black silhouette. If we could go to, this is the artist uh, hand-drawn rendering. And then she also gave us another rendering um, designed from her computer. If you could go to the next slide as well. The city staff has reviewed the application and the application meets all our requirements and is eligible to move on the artist rendering review and recommendations phase by the arts and cultural commission. I believe the artist and Mr. King might be um, waiting on the line. Are they Courtney? Hey, Mr. King, I do not have the artist. I can go ahead and unmute him now. Mr. King, you've been unmuted. Hello, thank you. Uh, Catherine, you did an excellent job of uh, capturing, uh, I think, the, the short version of the background here. Uh, I was inspired by Carolina. Um, my, uh, the, uh, the uh, figure of the woman and the, um, and the dog represent uh, my mother-in-law and her dog, who uh, five years ago, coming up this August 6th, had just enjoyed walking uh, and, and playing in the park and we're walking back and she was waiting at that cross signal. And uh, when the light turned green, she and, and her dog Cooper, her name was Ida Murphy, and her dog Cooper uh, uh, went across the street and was run down by someone turning left on Ramelli and they were both killed. Uh, that intersection obviously, and she was the light of my kids world. Um, I've lived, my family and I have lived here for 25 years and uh, for quite some time, we can't avoid that intersection. And it just, it just always brought back such dark memories. And I thought once I heard about the Adopt-A-Box program, uh, a couple of years after I would uh, try to raise money and do both of those boxes there to bring a little beauty uh, to that area. Uh, unfortunately with the Thomas fire and, and, uh, COVID and all these things, uh, we were delayed in this. And then just short a uh, couple of months ago, I drove by and saw that one of the boxes had been beautifully painted. And I immediately contacted uh, uh, Catherine and the Arts Council to find out if the other box, which is actually right at the crosswalk, it's not actually the box that was shown in the earlier slide. Uh, th that one that was at the arrow, that is the one that has currently been painted by Carolina. Um, but in fact, this other one was um, still available. And uh, when I announced my intentions on Nextdoor, so many people that knew Ida, uh, because she'd been here with her family for 15, 18 years, um, was known to the community. She volunteered. My wife is a, is a fourth grade teacher at Sarah Elementary School. And uh, Ida used to come in and, uh, and volunteer at that school and all that. So there was an outpouring and I thought, well, you know, to make this more of a community project, I would, I would contribute half of it. And if other people wanted to make small donations, that would be great because then they would have some ownership of this, this thing, this piece of art also. And I was overwhelmed with, uh, you know, we needed $350. I think I ended up with 460 or whatever. Um, and I said, Hey, Hey, we, we're covered. We're going to do this. Let's go ahead. So I submitted the $700 fee to Catherine. The 110 over my goal, I have uh, uh, provided as additional incentive or um, uh, uh, donation to Carolina, the artist, um, because she did the other painting in that area without uh, any backing. And so she did not get a stipend for that. So she'll be getting the full stipend plus some extra money from the community here. And I just gave her the broadest of ideas for this. And she absolutely captured uh, what was in my mind. Uh, I call this happier times because both Ida and Cooper were still there. And, and the one artistic contribution I made was asking her to put, put two trees up on the hilltop. So, because those again, remind us of happier times here at Ventura. So that's kind of the backstory. Um, Carolina is an amazing artist. If you haven't met her, she has overcome a lot of, of challenges and all that and is active in the community and works with kids and does amazing art and all that. So it's been a privilege to work with her. Um, and so, like I say, in a very, this I wanted this to be a piece of art first, but also a small memorial, and at least to people who know her and the story behind it. Um, you know, I wish, I, I wish and hope it could, 
bring home to them the fact that uh, crosswalks are not force fields. They do not protect you, right? I mean, she did everything right and, and stepped off the curb. And, and apparently this guy tried to beat her to the center median or whatever. And it's like, you know, um, I didn't want to make it a public safety statement with in a bold way, but at least the people that know that. I would like to ask the council, and, and I'll wrap up here, Catherine. I would like to ask the, ca the, the council is if this art project is approved. And by the way, I'm so in love with this art that I have a high, uh, high um, resolution digital version from, from Carolina, and I'm gonna print a large uh, stretch canvas prints of this because I love it when it's not folded around the box and, uh, and present that. This is all a surprise to my wife uh, who suffered the most loss here really, and also her sister um, as a way of taking some, so we're gonna be leaving Ventura uh, very shortly. Um, actually another year or so once she finished up teaching, but this way we'll be able to bring this piece of art with us. And I've encouraged Carolina, maybe she'd see if she could sell some of those or whatever. And uh, cause I really, I, I think it, it, it captures this idea of happier times. But I would like to ask the council if, if it is approved, would it be at all possible down in a very low bottom corner and very small print to, to add Ida and Cooper six or eight, six, 16. Again, just as a small reminder that, Oh, I wonder what that meant. Maybe, maybe something happened here. Maybe I should, maybe I should be careful. Maybe this is a memorial without, you know, but I understand if, if that's not uh, allowable, but I at least wanted to share that request with you. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you, you, Donald. Do I have any other public comment on this item before we move to? Yes, you do. I'm going okay. to meet Trevor Gottsman. Okay. Trevor, you may begin speaking. Hi, um, I, Donald, this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. And, you know, arts and culture, I love this. I love this. Um, when you're allowed to put 8 6 2016 or not, I've probably got pictures of your mother and I and Cooper running around on my video cam since I've got a pair of huskies that take me everywhere. So um, I will, I think this is wonderful. I, I, I please approve this. And this is what art and culture is meant to be. Bring us and enlighten us, bring us to what is tr the truth. This is the plain truth in this. This is where we all, come and we need places like this to express exuberate to just do it in in uh, in every you know surrounded by mother nature and in her in her arms so i say thank you very much donald and my deepest condolences to your mother, your wife and family and but ida's always present we know that and she now introduced me to her and cooper again thank you so i just want to thank you and um Please approve this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Trevor. That concludes our public speakers on this item. It, that that's it. Okay. Uh, do I have commission comments or questions? Does staff have uh, some guidance on whether or not uh, the request about the names and dates are uh, acceptable? Um, we have. You know, we do the little plaques uh, at the bottom of each piece of art that says who the artist was and that this was provided. Um, and we have the name happier times. Um, I would suggest, but I would also defer to Emily that the date could be added to the plaque that is always, we put a plaque in front of every utility box. Um, so it's not an, um, an odd request. Yeah, Chair, Chair Lakin and Commissioner May. So we have set precedent in the past for adding and and if everyone can mute their microphones please we're getting some perfect um, so we've set precedent on the public art commission in the past to be do a very small notation in memoriam of a family member a friend um, the utility box program is not set up to do to do memorial boxes but again to to very subtly incorporate it into a corner and or to a small you know, section of the utility box that has the notation of Ida and Cooper in the date. If the commission as a group um, decides that yes, 
they're comfortable with that, then you can add that to the motion and it can be included. Okay, right now, uh, any other commission comments? Tom, do you have one? I, yeah, there you go. I was looking for the raised hand symbol. I can't find it here. Oh, um, it doesn't work. It's been disabled. So you just have to like raise your hand and I scroll through. <laughs> yes, I do see you. <laughs> Well, Mr. King, I think you've uh, really hit on a great way to memorialize this very unhappy event and uh, bring it home to the community. And again, as the second speaker said, this is the, the perfect way of using art and to really provide some sort of healing, not only for your family, but others in the community who knew Ida and of course Cooper. So I applaud you for making those connections and using this. On that memorial front, I do recall we, we had a lot of discussion and I was on the minority end of one downtown where there was a, a child lost in a family. And I personally, from what Catherine outlined, I think the plaque at the bottom would be a better precedent for us to maybe shift to, because there I think we can say more clearly what, you know, this mural was dedicated to Ida and Cooper who were depicted in the mirror, who unfortunately were killed while crossing at this very point. Give a more description about what's going on here uh, so people can appreciate the mural in, in a broader sense and with more context. That'd be too much text, I think, to include in the mural and simply putting a name and a date doesn't reflect all the underlying meeting and context, which I think would really, you know, heighten people's awareness and appreciation for the art piece. So I, I certainly favor the plaque, uh, whatever's at the bottom, giving more detail about such things as this. I do appreciate the artwork. Uh, I was happy after squinting to see two trees back there. I've got a whole series of art pieces with two trees commemorated in it. And I too have a mural in my backyard and my muralist Lisa Kelly was running, well, where's your dog? He was here when I did this mural the first time. Well, he's passed on, he's over there near the uh, lime tree. He said, oh, well, let me, I, let me paint him in here. So she painted my dog into our murals. So our dog's as present as he ever was. Um, and we don't have to feed him. So uh, putting your animals and loved ones in murals is certainly a great idea. I appreciate this mural for that reason. I have a comment. I think Marie's talking, but she was muted. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> I didn't mute myself. Right? Staff must be muting. Okay, um, Ines, you go ahead, and then I'll go ahead. Yeah. Um, I I like the mural very much. Um, I love the composition. Again, each of the panels would have something really interesting going on, something very visual. Um, I love the sentiments. I am so sad to think of um, the happier moment. Um, I'm a little. I'm a, I, I'm hesitant. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know how I feel about that much text in a little plaque. And I did hear Commissioner Court uh, say that it's too much text to put on the box itself. Um, if it's too much text to put, uh, and I was thinking about the the text coming at, on the on that that uh, dark olive uh, stripe at the bottom that could hold the text. Um, uh, well, and I don't know if that much text in a little plaque at the bottom of the mural will be that effective visually. That's my, I, 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 I approve it with or without text. I just love it. And, um, and Ida and Cooper would love it too. Okay, um, I unmuted myself. <laughs> I, I, I just want to tell you, Mr. King, that I remember when your uh, mother-in-law and her dog were hit. I live on out on the East End, and I'm a past chair and current vice chair of the East Ventura Community Council. And I, I was really, really unhappy to hear that. And I, I contacted council and I asked them why we couldn't put um, one of those flashing crosswalks up like we have done on my end of town by the Scandia Center. I, it, it was really a tragedy. And I hope someday 
that when we build out this park, we can also add a safer way to cross from the neighboring communities. I, I hope and pray that we can do that. Um, and I would be very happy to have uh, whatever language memorializing uh, uh, Ida. And I mean, I, I, I would respect what he wanted uh, rather than add a lot of language. I, I think it's since he's paid for this and um, it was his idea, I would like to see you know, if he indeed wants this extra language, uh, Commissioner Collard, he may just want the simple thing. I, I, I would, I would like to respect his wishes there. And I, I, I saw this unfold on next door, and I saw the community really respond to it, and it was a really lovely thing to see. Uh, and so that really, this whole process made me very happy. So I'm very happy to approve this mural, and I guess we just need to figure out how we're going to handle the language thing. Do we have, could, could, is he, is Mr. King still on Catherine? Can we ask him what, what his wishes are for this? I think Courtney can let us know if he's still on. He did just reference the date, so. Yeah. I can him for, yes. One moment. I mean, I, I think maybe that, it could be that's all he wanted. I, I don't know. Um, I'm still on if somebody can unmute. Oh yeah, yeah. No, uh, Mr. King, what what is what would you like to see there since you paid for this? <laughs> I can't hear him now. Mr. King, you're unmuted. Um, let's try let's try this. Does that help? Try again. It looks like you keep going from muted to unmuted. Now can you hear me? Yes. Now Very good. Uh, like I say, uh, we suffered the deepest loss. Um, but the whole community did also suffered a loss. So um, I don't want this to get too complicated or too personal, but uh, I also want to say thank you. So I can, I can, I can sense the, the heartfelt feelings of, of the council and the comments that have been shared. That means a lot to me and I'll pass those along to my wife. Um, I think that what would be sufficient would be Ida and Cooper 8616 and in quotes, cross with care, or something, a, a simple little safety mo uh, uh, statement that people, it, it would imply that that's what happened without getting into too much detail or, or cross safely or something like that. What are, you, what are thoughts on that? Cross safely, I like your, I like your idea. That, that's lovely, I'm fine with that. So, yeah. Yeah. Commissioner yeah. Collar, what would you like to do? Or maybe please cross safely. How's that? I mean, that's I think great phrasing. And I'm thinking about is this going to be painted on, and how how readily can you see that if it's going to be, you know, not so obtrusive that it that it takes away from the overall image, but still legible. Well, the sad to me the saddest thing is Ida and Cooper are not the only people that have been lost in that area, right? I mean. As, as I think Marie said earlier, what it really needs is is true and proper safety uh, 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 type of uh, implementation there, uh, including a left turn arrow from Ramelli and things like that. So I don't think in any way, shape or form, excuse me, this mural can directly save lives and all that, but to at least have that thought there so when people take a look at it, they immediately get some context. They see a, a name and a date and an admonition to please cross safely. The people that take the time to see that will get it. But I think we need to press the city for flashing lights and that sort of stuff, especially as that, that end of the park gets developed. I mean, we're only gonna get more traffic there. So that would be my feeling. I would say Iden Cooper, eight, six, 16 quotes, Please cross safely. And, uh, Chair Lincoln, uh, my only thought is that that phrase might be more easily read if it were, you know, embossed on a plat on a small plate with, you know, real type as opposed to try to put that on and with a paintbrush somehow, even as a fine brush. I'm not quibbling at all about the text. It's more a case of okay. how, how 
which way is going to create a more legible I, I, if you reversed it out of the olive at the bottom like and, and did the whole thing in white i think that would be fairly legible but i mean it's i don't remember emily how big the plaques are or the how how what is the font size on the plaques chair, chair laker and, and commissioner collard so based on the size of the plaque there's a limited a limited amount of text that we can add to each plaque what we can do if the commission and Mr. King are interested is we can, um, after the vote is taken, so next week and or the week after, we can work with the artist, Mr. King, and the print shop that puts together the, the plaques. And we can identify, is it going to be more legible on the plaque? And if so, how could we um, identify Ida Cooper, the date, and then the text that might accompany it? Or if it's not going to be legible on the plaque, we could find a location on the utility box, the right color to use for the font so that that becomes the most le legible option. But we could do that if approved by commission tonight um, outside of the meeting to see which is going to be the most sense by looking at the box, looking at the various options. But I don't have the details behind what the, the options would be based on the, the plaque and the print vendor. Okay. So then do I have a motion yet um, to approve this uh, with the caveat that we will um, figure out which is the more legible option for the memorial? I move. I'll, I'll second. Okay, and then I need to vote, please. Aye. Commissioner Collar? Aye. Chair Lakin? Aye. Commissioner May? Aye. Commissioner Maguio? Aye. Commissioner Mullen? I had comments that I would have liked to share. Um, Oops, we didn't see your hand. So sorry. Okay. I, I didn't raise it. And to be honest, I can't find that raise hand button. I don't know. <laughs> <where> <laughs> Does it, you just got to go like this or something. Okay. I know. It, well, and I have to say, so yesterday I actually uh, took a walk from my house to to the box because I wanted this to be fresh in my memory. And, you know, the immediate thing that came to mind, and I'm a huge animal person, and, you know, my heart goes out to you, Donald, for everything that you've gone through. And I think it's a very moving and effective way to commemorate your family and um, to raise some awareness, you know. And I'm a firm believer that the arts have a very powerful voice in that, in that regards. What I thought would... I hate, it's always, I have trouble saying things in a very delicate way, but, um, you know, instead of the two boxes seeming almost redundant, I hate to phrase it that way, but they're so similar. What I thought would be really fascinating, and of course, this is where the artist has artistic license, and this is your vision for the project, um, is that they could be almost companion pieces. You have a sunset piece that's already done, and I was thinking maybe like it it's a sunrise piece, you know, maybe with just a very simple change in the color scheme of the background, you could almost create a, an even more impactful um, presence. So that was just one thing I wanted to throw out there. And, um, you know, this dovetails into the next agenda item, which is us having a process in place to be able to take in this sort of um, you know, idea of, you know, how do we create a memorial piece and how do we Im imbue that? And my worry, I guess, in writing anything on the box of it's painted on, it's not going to be very clear or legible. I mean, you're really relying on the artist talent to have perfect penmanship, which is almost impossible when you're talking about paint. So, um, you know, I, I really just want to see us have a very formal process, well thought out public art program um, for these sorts of instances, you know, that we have thought of all of this ahead of time and just have a smooth, a smooth process. So <laughs> those are my thoughts. And uh, with that, I will vote. Yes. <laughs> okay. And uh, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, I think if I'm not sure, again, the size of the plaques, but if we, if a sort of matter of policy, we have to work into this and hopefully we will in our next item but maybe have two two plaques one of them can be the title and the artist things like that but a second one could provide this amplification about you know the context for this plaque i think of the uh, uh, steve cummins uh, piece for example where's this guy riding a bicycle well, what well there's a lot more to say there even in a small plaque would really convey much more about that particular piece and as many other uh, boxes also that have a, a lot of context that i think deserve to be expressed but not necessarily in the artwork but 
in some other legible and permanent location below it with the name and title. So I think Emily came up with the perfect solution to proceed. And I'm only suggesting don't limit yourself to just one plaque. Maybe you have two. All right, uh, so I, I do believe um, we have approved this box. <laughs> and um, Emily will come back to us and let us know in what format the memorial will take. So thank you, uh, everyone. Carolina, as usual, I don't, I, I assume she will watch this eventually. She's amazing, and I've had a chance to chat with her out there, and she's got just this great attitude. And thank you, Mr. King, for coming up with this idea and funding it and getting the community to pitch in as well. I think it's it's absolutely spectacular and I'm very proud to drive by it every day. Okay, so I will move on to consent or excuse me, formal item number three, arts and culture commission project discussion and subcommittee development. All right, good evening, Arts and Culture Commission. So as most of you remember, during last month's Arts and, Arts and Culture section presentation, uh, I shared a list of projects and initiatives the commission might be interested in supporting during the upcoming fiscal year. So the projects presented were listed on our Arts and Culture section priority list. It's each fiscal year as a section, and then as a part of the larger community partnerships division, we meet to discuss what our two to five year priorities are going to be. So the, the projects and initiatives listed on the current slide, four of those were included on our section project list. And then the fifth project was recently added to the list and it was included based on the recommendation from Commissioner Collert connected with the cultural funding grant uh, program award recommendations. So if you remember at one of our very first commission meetings, uh, we presented the panel's uh, award recommendations for our cultural funding grant program. And as the discussion occurred, there were a number of commissioners who mentioned it would be nice to, to have um, updated guidelines for reviewing and, and identifying how uh, funding would be awarded. So we decided to add that fifth um, project to the list for you as a commission to, to look at tonight. So as an arts and culture commission's section, we'll be making forward crop progress on all five of these projects over the next two years. It's part of our priority list. With commission support, we can actually expedite our timeline and ensure commission input and recommendations are incorporated into all five of the final products. Next slide. So based on our current arts and culture section priorities, as a team, we sat down and looked at the five projects and tried to identify based on time sensitivity, based on current priorities, based on past community input, we have three projects that we're recommending the commission look at tonight. So the three projects would be reviewing and updating education materials, exhibits, and historic programs to ensure they're culturally sensitive and follow current best, best practice. And obviously this is a larger project in scope. It's one that's likely to take two to five years, but the intent would be that it would be incredibly valuable to have a commission subcommittee look at um, identifying best practices, seeing what other cities, museums, and historical sites are doing, recommending guiding principles for doing the review of our historic sites, our programs, and our didactics, and also looking at our education materials, not only for our historic specific programs led by the docents, but also for our interpretive outreach programs that we do for our elementary school classrooms. The second project that we identified as a priority was developing a rubric or a guide for reviewing and recommending public art projects. Again, this is another project that um, we had discussed as an arts and culture section team that I know has been brought up a number of times during our meetings by, by commissioners in terms of having a guide that could be presented not only to artists who are putting together um, proposed mural projects and or utility boxes, uh, potentially temporary art pieces, 
but also as a commission that you can use to identify um, how decisions are made connected to memorial boxes, connected to say pieces of art that are next to one another, connected, connected to materials, et cetera, that we could provide as well to the artist so that they have an understanding of, of what the commission, what lens you'll be looking at as you're reviewing and recommending projects. And then the third is updating the utility box program. So we've seen a definite increase in interest in our utility box program. The previous application and, and program requirements were developed um, over five years ago. So we figured it would be a nice opportunity to look at what other cities are doing. I know it's been mentioned before wrapping the boxes. There's the potential of doing some themed boxes. Um, but an opportunity to look at that program and identify what updates and revisions are recommended for the application, what the new guidelines would be, what the various types of materials um, that could be used for the boxes uh, might be. And then also to identify, um, we have a really, I think, wonderful opportunity to enhance the program in the future. Uh, it's a nice way of getting artwork um, in a relatively affordable way into the community and across all of our, our seven districts. Next slide, please. So as a commission, your next steps in the process really will include discussing and identifying one to two of the projects you'd like to focus on during the next fiscal year. And that fiscal year being July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. And the recommendation from staff is one to two projects with the reality is we'd love to do all five, but based on, on staff time, based on commissioner availability, uh, realistically one to two is probably the most sustainable and the most realistic uh, in terms of what we'd be able to accomplish in a year. After identifying the projects the commission would be interested in supporting, it would be developing subcommittees. And then once the subcommittees are assigned um, during that very first subcommittee, uh, figuring out who the subcommittee chair or lead would be. And then once subcommittees are identified, that subcommittee uh, taking the time to study, review, and make recommendations for the project that they're focusing on or overseeing. And then at the end of, of the study, review, and recommendation phase, the subcommittees would come back to the commission and provide presentations on what they recommend for a specific project. Each commission is a little bit different. Um, some commissions in the past have decided to do report outs each meeting. Others have wanted to wait until they've spent a little more time putting together um, kind of a package for the project, but that's something that could be decided by the subcommittee. And then with the subcommittees, based on the size of the Arts and Culture Commission, so a nine member commission, the subcommittees could go anywhere from one commissioner up to four commissioners and still be within um, the Brown Act requirements. Next slide. So listed on the slide are the five uh, options or the five projects that staff are recommending. Based on having two commissioners absent tonight, as a commission, you can also decide this evening that you'd like to discuss the projects, potentially narrow down the list that as a commission you're interested in supporting, and then you could table the official selection of the projects that you'd like to focus on until your August meeting. Or you can move forward with the discussion, the voting uh, and identifying which projects you'd like to focus on. And then if interested, could also develop your subcommittees as well. But again, you can decide to do all, some, um, and or table it, uh, whatever you're most, most interested in doing this evening. So that's the end of my very brief presentation. Uh, I'm available for questions if you have any. Do we have any public comment on this item? No, there is no public comment. Okay, then my colleague has his hand raised. So Emily, if I'm understanding you, while we've got five different uh, programs that probably all of which deserve attention, do you believe you can only do three at the most during the coming year? And the three that you gave us, one, two, and three, were your your priorities. 
of the five. Is that my correct understanding? Correct. So all of the, the items on the list, excluding number five, were on our, our section or our division's priority list. So projects that we had identified as a staff team, we would be working on over the next two years. So looking at um, how we could incorporate commission input, support, and recommendations into the project, we, we looked at everything on our list and identified these four seem like they would um, be the best fit where it would be on our, from our perspective, the most valuable to have, you know, commissioners uh, support the study, support the kind of looking at what works in other cities, what they feel the community would be most interested in. And, and out of those four, with the fifth included and added to our list about the cultural funding, we felt the three that were our top three priorities within the next two years were the three that, that we listed. So the, the cultural sensitivity of our historic sites, the rubric for reviewing and approving art projects, and then the utility box program, those were our top three. But understanding that within that, based on commission capacity, it might be only one or two that the commission feels they have the capacity to help kind of dig in with us and help support. Um, all five on the list, are, are projects that we'll move forward with in the next two years. It's just based on our existing workload. It's not realistic that we'd be able to give a staff the, the time needed to work with the commission to try and accomplish all five within this fiscal year. Yeah, thanks for that explanation. Again, it's every one of these come before the commission or the staff every year. So it's like they all need to be worked on and it's it's, Unfortunately, you don't have the staff to kind of keep up because I know any of these can kind of blossom into a full blown controversy at some time. And it's nice to kind of get your house in order and with the commission being involved too collectively. So we've got uh, least chance of upsets and disgruntled uh, citizens as they uh, try to participate. So, well, I mean, um, well, I, number four is hands down the, the number one uh, priority for me. Um, and so I, I would really like to work on that one and I don't know how the rest of you feel, but I mean, this is what we're here to do. Um, and, and also number one, I guess my question to you staff is, do we have a lot of complaints about being culturally insensitive? I mean, where did this come from? Or, or, was this generated somehow by, uh out there I, I don't know how important that is um maybe you could let me know i don't know yeah ab absolutely chair lakin so during the covid pandemic one of the the things we noticed as a staff team is as we were transitioning to doing more virtual programs more films um, as we were um, looking at the exhibits we have at our different historic sites we started to recognize that the, the language that was being used, the information being presented had not gone through kind of the cultural filter in the last 15 to 20 years. So looking at um, the words that we use, the information we present, is it well-rounded? Does it encompass all the different kind of cultures that, that have lived and been a part of Ventura? Is the language that's currently being used to represent different cultures is it is it is it something that's been identified by the community as this is no longer this this is considered insensitive now so it's that opportunity for us to look at with all of our historic sites that process and that project takes a while but it's a chance to say how can we little by little start looking at um, say the didactics that are at the albinger and the way the educational materials are presented. Is there a way we want to adjust the way something is, is referenced? Are there additional um, facts and information we'd like to include to help paint a, a more accurate picture or a more well-rounded picture? That, that's what we really wanted to look at. And, and we did identify with a few of our programs that there were some things that we may have done in the past that we would not choose to do in the future to be as sensitive as we can to, to the different cultures in Ventura. Well, so to follow up then you, this is this a commission project? We're gonna have 
committee, or is this a staff project, or is this a uh, vote? So, so Chair Lakin, all five of these are projects that staff will be working on in the next five years. So part of the, the identifying projects that the commission might be interested in supporting and helping out with is their approved projects that, that we as a staff team will be working on. So we already know that they've been identified as a priority for arts and culture within the city. So knowing that if commission's going to be providing additional support via a subcommittee, we want that time and energy research and recommendations to go into projects that are, are, are have already been approved and will already be working on. So that's where the top four are ones that we had identified we're working on and the value of having additional commission support, um, having commission provide recommendations on what our final product or what our final kind of end result is. We see we see definite benefits and value because you bring in the community perspective in addition to what we're gathering from the community and, and from kind of our, our our staffing and our resource capacity. And because the past we've had, we've had a lot of input on um, the the rubric, the guides. Um, so that's yeah, we've always and, had done a lot with. Uh, and, yeah, yeah. And, and so the in, the intent is rather than having the commission come up with a project that we may or may not be able to move forward with, because we may not have um, the financial. Uh, resources to move forward with it, or we may not have the capacity to move forward with a program or an idea. It was identifying what are five things, tangible things that we know we'll be working on that we had identified would be really wonderful to have the commission involved in. Um, part of what we had experienced in previous commissions was a few commissioners had, had mentioned, I feel like I'm putting a lot of time in but I'm not seeing the final result, or I'm not seeing the initiative or the project moving forward at the speed that I'd like. So this is that opportunity to say, these are existing projects that, that the time spent in a subcommittee doing research would directly benefit the final product, the final output that then kind of helps our arts and culture programs become even stronger. So that's, that's where the list and the projects come from. So this is mostly a staff project, but you are going to look for us, look to us for guidance. Uh, versus, I mean, number four, I have a lot of ideas for, <laughs> but uh, that was why I was asking. But I will let my other commissioners talk now. <laughs> yeah, and and, yeah. and and Commissioner Mongio, I see your hand. I'll do yours next. Um, Chair Lakin, the the piece with the projects is. On all five of these, we would likely come back and ask, ask for some general commission support um, and, and input. Commissioners in the past have, have mentioned they wanted to provide more of a uh, in the trenches support with the research, with the creating the foundation, with coming up, rather than seeing just the final product, being involved in it from start to finish or from the middle to the top. So that's where these projects come from. As a commission, you may decide with the number of murals that we're approving, with the utility boxes we're approving, with the cultural funding um, grant award recommendations, no one on the commission has the capacity to be on a subcommittee to support an existing approved project, and that's fine. These are just projects that are approved and that the commission can you know, provide additional support, more in the trenches support, if they would like. Commissioner Mongio, you had your hand up. Yes, um, the, the, of the five projects on the slide, the one that um, excites me the most is number four, um, identify the opportunities to partner with community and groups. Um, uh, but I do understand all of them are interesting and useful. However, I have, I have a question or a suggestion, I'm not sure. Number one, review and update education materials, exhibits. I mean, 20, 25 years is a little long not to review and revise something that has been so um, talked about and studied. Um, 
here's here's my thought. We have a community college here in Ventura that I'm not sure anymore if they have um, an anthropology department, but I know they have an English department, and I know that they have a very strong um, cross cultural uh, or multicultural um, um, focus on the students. Um, I also know we have a university, and they do have an education, English, anthro, and ethno programs. And we have Moore Park that has a very strong anthropology um, department. So, <clears throat> and some of them have master's programs as well. So, has anybody from the city contacted the higher education institutions to propose that professors select students or announce the potential to students to do this kind of work for the city and that the students or the department will be uh, honored and I mean cited and not cited, honored, uh, uh, added <laughs> to the pamphlet or whatever and um, maybe the professors can give extra credit or the students can do for extra credit work and do the revision and the updating that of course the city and or the, co their, uh, the committee will read and, and edit and approve or not approve, but not to have to do the work from the very bottom when we have so many resources in the community, in the county that can help us get there. Yes, and Commissioner Mongio, so the, the intent of, of the projects that are listed are, are not necessarily to share that as an arts and culture section, we'd be starting from scratch. So no forward progress or momentum has been made. Part of, so number one that you mentioned, part of our first steps forward that we'll take on the project is just what you mentioned. So it's looking at what resources do we have in the community? What experts do we have in the field? Reaching out to the Museum of Ventura County, reaching out to our colleges and identifying if, if we're going to put together some guiding principles for how we're um, reviewing materials, if we're going to put together kind of what we're looking for and what our priorities are, that's part of the, the subcommittee and having the commission join the staff team on our project is ideas and suggestions that commissioners have when we meet in our subcommittee, it's it's saying, okay, hey, here's what we've already done. Here's what as a staff team we've identified um, our priority areas are within the project. Let's talk about what our best next steps are. Okay, let's you know make sure we reach out to the museum, to the college. Hey, wouldn't it be a great idea to see if um, a, a master's project or an individual who this is their area of expertise that they're going into um, for their career that they want to come and volunteer and put together a cultural sensitivity rubric and or go through, say, the Albinger first, then the Elite Adobe. So that's that's part of the subcommittee piece is, is identifying as a group, as a committee, um, how we would approach the project the most effective way. So yes, all, all the ideas you mentioned, yes, we've, we've thought of them, they're on our list. These are more a list of, does the commission wanna be involved in this? And if so, great, we can do subcommittees. If the commission does not want to be, that's fine as well. Todd had a question and then Carolyn. I, I see personally myself being least uh, capable of assisting in number one, and wondered, I mean, the Historic Preservation Commission might have with, you know, with its role throughout the city, would have more input than I would have or should have. And I particularly think number four is important because our, we're sort of ambassadors, you know, from the arts, cultural area within the community that, and knowing that that's the crying need for that, that I'd like to put efforts into two, three, and four, uh, because two and three, we have to deal with on a fairly regular basis. and. If things need to be straightened up, we really it'd be a payoff for us commissioners if we could help in that. And number four is because we're the elected people to reach out to our friends and organizational supporters to kind of link up arms and go forward with this. So 
I guess my priorities would be two, three, and four, and uh, least of all, number one. But I can certainly, I don't mind reviewing any suggestions, and I think uh, Commissioner Monheo had some excellent ideas, and I support that fully, and it sounds like staff has already been thinking of that as well, so. Carolyn, do you have a comment? Uh, yeah, I think they're all important. <laughs> and but for me, number three, and I I say it in every meeting, right? Like I'm so frustrated by this public art utility box program. Like I do not to to be honest, I kind of want to suggest that we put them on hold uh, any further applications until we do this because it is to be quite frank, you know, a little willy nilly of a process, and I I don't. It's very hard for me personally. I don't know if others on the panel feel this to, um, you know, critique, approve, judge, uh, provide input when there's like very little guidance or just a measure of. I I, I, just, I I struggle greatly with this program, and I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> like I even wanted to recuse myself today. You know, I felt like that should almost have been. Until we review this program, uh, you know, then we then we talk about these other applications. So, uh, for me, that's that's at the top of the list. And you know, like uh, Collard said, you know, this is something we deal with in every single meeting. And the popularity it seems to be growing and increasing. So, you know, if if we have to do this every month, I would just love some structure and to know what best practices are in other cities. I don't think this is going to take a tremendous amount of time. But I, I, do, I would love to champion that. I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Okay. Commissioner May, did you have any comments? Preferences? <clears throat> uh, yeah, similar to Commissioner Collard, I'm not particularly qualified uh, to comment on number one. Um, if there's been um, concern in that area, then I'd be interested in uh, uh, supporting um, more action in that area. Um, two through five are pretty much uh, items that we've been talking about already. So I, I think the only issue with number one is that it just seems like it's kind of a, a surprise uh, to us, but two through five we've been talking about doing for a couple of years now. So. Okay. Do I have any other comments? Uh, yeah, no, I agree with uh, Commissioner Collar two, three, and four uh, in particular, uh, and especially number four, <laughs> uh, because they, they're just such need out there. And so, uh, and that's something I, like I said earlier, I have a lot of ideas about. So, uh, I guess then we need to vote on three. Is that what you're asking us to do, Emily? So, so you can there's a couple different options for tonight so as a commission you can decide that you'd like to support three of the projects um, and have them on the commission say project list for the next year with each of those three projects you would then be working with a staff lead who would be able to walk through the scope of the project what the city resources are that are involved because for instance say with update the utility box program we know the update of the application, easy. And not by, by easy, I mean, it doesn't take a ton of additional resources to research and update the application and the process to look at best practices in other cities and to move forward. Um, if the commission wanted within the utility box program to introduce the addition of 20 new utility boxes, that would be something that we could share. We don't have the financial resources for it at this time, but here's some kind of creative fundraising we might be able to do, some grants we might be able to look into. So that's where with your staff lead for each of the projects, we'd be able to help um, kind of guide the, the direction of the project connected to the priorities that have been um, identified as a division. And then again, what staffing resources are truly available, what financial resources are truly available, and then where the creativity lies. So with, with the projects you decide to, to focus on, you can then decide that uh, you'll establish subcommittees for each of the projects. So again, it could be a subcommittee with one individual, it could be a subcommittee with up to four commissioners. So once you, you voted on your, the projects you'd like to focus on, 
then the second vote would be to identify who is on those specific subcommittees. And it could be that you do a subcommittee vote tonight and then you could add or adjust the subcommittees next meeting if interested, or you could decide that you wanted to wait to identify who would be on the subcommittees until the August meeting when both Chair uh, Commissioner Bank or Commissioner Pecht and Commissioner Wilson are back. So again, it would be identifying the, the projects, then potentially identifying the subcommittees, uh, and then from there, we would set up the side subcommittee meetings with your staff lead. Okay, so yeah, we definitely need to wait until we have all our commission present to decide the kind of meetings. So then we need a vote tonight to identify the priority. And then another vote to come up with a commission structure or subcommittee structure. There's a lot of like noise in the background here. I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that that seems plausible for tonight. Uh, so do I have a motion uh, out there to recommend three projects that we'd like to work on? I I I I need I need something. Okay, please. Um, Commissioner Mullen made a point about the utility box program and the lack of structure. And there is an item about updating the utility box program. Uh, can we combine two and three? That does make sense, doesn't it? But, at, but the problem is we do a lot of public art besides utility boxes. So. Uh huh. Yeah. But shouldn't the protocol be? Um, Applicable across the different public art uh, proposals and approval. I mean, the protocol is we go one, two, three, four, five, whether it be a small utility box or a whole park uh, covered with rocks. Do what is it that what is it the application that? applies to? What is it that um, what are the what are the the markers that we need to look at first? What are the uh, conditions that we need to demand. What are the aesthetics that we're looking at? What I mean, the protocol should be transferable. I would think. We're, yeah, no, I I agree. I just uh, I was just, I thought maybe they just wanted to update the utility box program by looking at specific examples of other utility boxes, and that there were some things that were specific just to that program. So I wasn't sure. Dad, what was your so, so Chair Lakin, and any of the projects could be combined. Um, I do, uh, Commissioner Mongio, absolutely. When it comes to developing a rubric, the rubric is something that would be used uh, when the commission was making uh, recommendations on the utility boxes that were being presented. Do the two need to be hand in hand? Not necessarily. But I see where they're a nice kind of companion piece if you wanted to combine the two. You could, as a commission, combine the two into a single project, and then your subcommittee could choose to do that project in two phases. So, in essence, you could opt to, to update the utility box program first and then finalize the rubric second, or in updating the utility box program. You could do the initial rubric for utility boxes, and then as the second phase, expand the rubric for murals, for temporary pieces, for sculptures, et cetera. So we, we would develop a checkbox, if we will, on what we should be looking for in public art, best practices, and then that would also apply to the utility box program. Yes, and Chair Lick and, and Commissioner Collard, I see your hands up, so so we'll move to you. Sorry, I, so, I guess. So when, <laughs> yeah, when it when it comes to the projects, the scope of the project, the, the subcommittees will meet with the staff leads to discuss um, what is the, the project outline. So when we look at what's going to be first step, second step, third step, fourth step, 
And then as a commission, the final project or the final kind of recommendation will come before the commission. But at the end of the day, it, it also has to go through the city staff um, review and approval process. So on some of them, it will go through our department director, through the city attorney's office, et cetera. So as a commission, you're helping support the final project. The commission may have the, the approval on some of the projects, the final approval. And then depending on the project and the scope, it could be that the final approval is the department director and the city attorney's office. But all of the logistics and details uh, in our first few subcommittee meetings, we would be going through so that, that everybody understood from start to finish what the different steps and elements of the project would be. Um, Commissioner Collar, you had your hand. You got to unmute, Todd. I'm sorry. Once uh, we've decided on the say the three priorities, uh, could we then send out or staff send out an email to all the commissioners saying this is what happened? You know, tonight's meeting. These are the three projects we're looking for. Which of all of you are interested in which projects? We don't have to be going through and starting discussions at the meeting itself. We can have people thinking about in advance which of the project options they want to engage in. Is that? Legally possible to solicit that input so we get to the commission meeting next time and people have already decided what they want to do. Yes, yes, Commissioner Caller. What I could do is I could send out the email. I could gather everyone's, you know, number one, number two, number three interest. There, there is the potential that commissioners may say um, when requested that they don't have the capacity outside of the regular commission meetings to be on a subcommittee, and that's okay. But then prior to the meeting, uh, Chair Lakin and I could meet to look at the, the subcommittee requests by each of the commissioners. We could put together the subcommittees based on those requests. And then we could present those at the August meeting as here are the finalized subcommittees. Obviously, we would not um, elect to put a commissioner on a subcommittee that they did not say that they would be interested in, in being involved in. And we would not put a commissioner on a subcommittee if they said they did not have the time or capacity to support a subcommittee project. That sounds great. Save us time in meetings too. Okay, well, I'll make a motion that we uh, pursue uh, projects 2, 3 and 4 as identified on the project opportunity list and that uh, we ask staff to proceed with a polling of the full commissioners via emails to which of the 3 projects we ultimately approve of tonight, asking them which ones they'd like to serve on as subcommittee members. I second. Okay, then we need a vote. Commissioner Collar? Yes. Chair Lakin? Yes. Commissioner May? Yes. Commissioner Mungwil? Yes. Commissioner Mullins? Yes. And that motion passes. Motion passes. Mm -hmm. Good. We're clipping through here tonight. Okay. Good one. Um, Looking forward to this a lot, especially number four. Uh, so we will move on to department communications. Emily. So I'm going to pass the baton to Catherine and if you'll advance to the next slide, please, Courtney. I just wanted to update everybody on um, a few things that are happening culturally and historically in the community that the city is sponsoring or putting on. Um, as you know, we had our second Sunday of July uh, last weekend at the Olivas Adobe. Um, but we just to refresh everyone's memory, we've been open the second Sunday of every month, May through August at the Olivas. Um, and we have docents on site to talk about the Olivas itself. And then we've been offering special events and opportunities combined with those hours that were open on those Sundays. If we could go to the next slide, please. So in June, we invited plain air artists to come out and paint, and we had 10 different artists come and paint at the Olivas during those hours from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. 
uh, we considered it a great success that so many artists came out and were inspired. And with the exception of two of them, the other eight had never been to the site before. So that was exciting. And then a few of them have come back since then and painted at the site. Because if you've ever been out there, there's a lot to inspire paintings. Um, next slide, please. And then last weekend, we had our, our same time frame, but we decided to do an art project with um, children and families, whoever wanted to participate, to celebrate um, the stained glass etching. Uh, there actually, it's etched glass in, that is in the exhibit hall. You can kind of see that in the one photograph in the back there. Um, we thought, oh, you know, a lot of people don't realize that this was donated by the uh, mission to the Olivas Adobe in our exhibit hall. We have two pieces of the etched glass. And as I was researching, I found that Mark Chagall's um, birthday uh, was last weekend, uh, and he has some very famous stained glass pieces all over the world. Um, but we celebrated his UN piece in New York, uh, and the children got to see that piece um, in photographs and then make their own stained glass pieces using watercolors and wax resist. Um, and that was fun. We had uh, several families, as you can see from the picture. Um, so we considered it a successful event. Again, people who had never been to the site before, um, and we hope we'll return uh, as we continue with these second Sundays. And then the next second Sunday, just to remind you, is on August 8th from 11 to 3, and we're working uh, to have someone come and talk about how the Chumash and the Olivas families work together at the Adobe, and then we'll also have a Chumash art project. Next slide, please. And then just to update you, the, um, util the two utility boxes uh, painted by K artist Kaylee Pendleton are finished and they are on the corner of Day and Telegraph Roads. Uh, there's Kaylee painting one of the boxes. Um, uh, Sheldon at the Ventura Breeze did a nice little article about her in the last um, edition of the Breeze. And then th those are the two boxes completed. They're really beautiful. It turned out really well. So I'm, I'm really pleased. Uh, how they turned out. I hope you will be too. I think that's it. Next slide. Yep. That's um, all I have. And I don't know if Emily has something to add. Yeah. And then uh, two quick uh, updates to round out our department communications. So I was uh, talking with Chair Lakin earlier today about the Wall Street mural. So the mural project um, proposed by the Westside Community Development Corporation that came to the Arts and Culture Commission a few months ago. So I just wanted to share a status update on where the project is at. Uh, so connected to the project, uh, community development block grant funding is being used to, to pay for the mural. And connected with the CDBG funding requirements, um, WCDC is waiting to get final approval from the state of California to move forward. So once the state of California provides the approval based on CDBG funding requirements, the final phase of the mural review will go to an administrative hearing in the community development department. And the administrative hearing is basically the second phase of a mural approval. Um, for this particular mural, because it was proposed on a city wall, uh, the administrative hearing is a requirement and it provides the opportunity for the um, applicant, which it's a joint application between the city and WCDC, so Jackie Pierce and the Westside Community Development Corporation, to share the mural, um, to go through the uh, community outreach that was uh, provided for the project, to talk about um, the project itself, the nexus, um, who will be moving forward with it. So a lot of the same information and details that were shared at the Arts and Culture Commission and then for the administrative hearing um, director to make the final approval on whether or not the project can officially move forward or not. Um, there has been some expressed opposition to the project. Um, so Jackie Pierce and her team of artists and community members have been um, doing additional outreach, uh, have been talking to the different uh, residents and business owners uh, in the immediate area, so on Wall Street, on Ventura Avenue, um, and the surrounding locations, just to, to provide a little more uh, detail to talk about the community members involved, um, the value of the project. 
And so the administrative hearing will also provide an opportunity for both sets of community members, those who oppose the mural and those who support the mural to be able to um, express uh, their support in a public setting. So uh, as soon as the official date for the administrative hearing is identified, uh, Catherine or I will share that with the commission, but just wanted to, to let you know where we're at with that project. And then the final update is uh, the August meeting is our next phase two of the general plan consultant team coming to get the commission's uh, input and feedback. The uh, consultant team hired a specialist to put together an arts and culture existing conditions report. It's actually the same uh, consultant that worked on the 2005 uh, arts and culture conditions report for the general plan. So we're really lucky to have his expertise and history and understanding of Ventura. He'll be presenting the report. Uh, the commission will have the opportunity to read through it prior to the meeting. And then the second half of the meeting, uh, both the consultant team and the community development team working on the general plan will be asking questions and we'll be looking at feedback. And uh, both the department and the general plan team have shared that similar to the last time they came to the meeting, they'll provide the questions ahead of time so that you have the opportunity to read through them, to look at the PowerPoint presentation and come to the meeting uh, prepared to provide uh, your feedback, input, and more. And that ends our department communications. I just wanted to make sure everyone um, knew that I was asked by uh, Jackie Pierce and MB Hanrahan to send in a letter to uh, Peter Gilly uh, expressing my personal support for the project and letting him know, you know, obviously he knew that our commission had voted for it and that will be part of the public record. And um, I will leave it up to the other commissioners if they would also like to send in their own letters. I think um, the opposition to this project has gathered quite a number of signatures also in opposition. Uh, and so that is why the uh, Jackie and her team have been doing the output and the outreach that they have. They've uh, made a video, they've done a lot of things. I think they're maybe a little worried so if you would also like to do that, I'm sure Jackie and her team would very much appreciate that. So uh, do we have any commission communications tonight? And, and Commissioner Lake, and I apologize for interrupting, connected to what you just shared, um, like Chair Lakin said, if as a commissioner, you would like to express your support, support for the project as a community member or a resident, mm -hmm. uh, you're welcome to do that by email, by written letter, uh, if you have any neighbors or friends that have also expressed support or opposition, um, they can do the same email letter and you can have them send those letters to me directly um, as the department supporting the project or partnering to, to move the project forward. I'm one of the uh, individuals responsible for collecting all of the community uh, input to be able to, to share and be presented at the administrative hearing. So, so that's definitely an option as well for you to, to share and or pass that message on to, to other community members uh, that you interact with. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, now hopefully it will still be approved, but I, I, I did wanna express that they had gone out and done the petition gathering, so. Um, is there is there any place where we can access where the project is? Where the project is, it's in our what, agenda. I, I was I was I in the commission. Then? Yes. I, I, yes, it's the one we just approved, I believe, in April on Wall Street, and it's uh, the with the woman with the flowing hair and. Oh, the one the where project. I wanted some changes on the right side. Okay, I know the project. Yeah, that one. Um, and so uh, since you know we'd all approved it, um, and you know with a few changes, obviously, that that you know. I just felt like I wanted to express my personal support. And then if you wanted to do that as well, all the, the more letters they can get, the more support they can get, the better is my point. So, yeah. Okay. Do we have commission communications on anything? Do I see hands up? I'm scrolling, scrolling. Yeah, Todd, there you go. 
can you explain what the opposition is? Do they have an alternative proposal? They just don't like that particular proposal. They don't want any murals at all. Emily, would you like to do that? Yeah, and Commissioner Collar, I can share more details outside of the meeting. Um, but the 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 opposition is is there's there's two community members who um, oppose the mural. One is just not a fan in general of of public art murals. Um, utility boxes, etc. Um, and then the other one, uh, the other individual expressed that they felt that the wall wasn't um, the appropriate place for a mural and suggested some other locations that might be a better fit. Hmm. Okay, well, I was going to add, uh, I've been getting emails from uh, California Arts Council as well as uh, some other materials suggesting there's a lot of money that could be flowing into our county from uh, federal and state sources. So hopefully the staff, has, you've looked into this, had a conversation with Denise Sindelar at the museum, and they're planning on having a uh, symposium, I guess, to talk about some of this. Uh, and attendance will be um, Sonia Tower, who used to have your job, Emily, uh, at the city. And now she's uh, with the NEA at the federal level. She lives in Ojai. And we'll be talking about, again, some of the opportunities there for us. So, we need to be present and uh, have some ideas in our hip pockets or about projects, things to do with, you know, there might be grants we could apply for. So, things looking up at least potentially for us. It's a significant amount of money. I got sent them as well. It is. Indeed. Do we have anything other commission communications? Looking for hand scrolling, scrolling. <laughs> Um, okay, I, I will just mention that uh, first Friday is back in person again uh, and Bell Arts had a, a wonderful showing for their very first live and in person first Friday and Mary Perez was also open down at Vida and Namba Arts Center was open. And so I expect more people will open as time goes on. I've heard some other things going on, but please. Uh, Join us the, on first Friday. It's a lot of fun and it's it's what sort of a showcase of what arts community can do and I, I highly recommend it. Thanks. That's it. Anybody else? I don't see anybody else. So I guess I need a motion to adjourn. I'll move we adjourn the meeting. Okay. Second. I don't need a motion to adjourn. If all yeah. items have been taken care of, you can just call them the meeting. Oh, okay. we'll just, yeah, I'm just, I have another uh, meeting that I always have to do that with. So I, okay. Thank you, everyone, and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Have a wonderful evening. You too.